go to every record store that I could find and be like, where's the Iggy Pop section, you know? And I would just look through and be like, oh, I don't, I don't got, I don't got right. fucking Zombie Birdhouse, you know? I don't have any Whatever. of the Bomp Records ones, yeah. you know? And, uh, you know, whenever they came back, it was like, oh, this is be pretty cool. And their song was pretty cool, but it had like most of the dudes from Sum 41 on it too, you know? So uh-huh. it was like, oh, okay, whatever. But then they got, then they did um, the weirdness. It's coming out. <laughs> no, no, that was that was uh, oh. Alien Ampar. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> some, which one's Sum 41? Which Sum 41 is like, they had a bass player named Cone. I, I don't but fucking But what was their know. song like? Um, I'm in love with a stripper. I don't no, know. No, there was like a video. They were all jumping around. Yeah. Their hair was gelled. Which one? <laughs> it was like every Blink-182 video you've ever seen. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but 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 they did do they did do the weirdness, um, and then they had their final one, which was called "Ready to Die." Okay. You know, at this point, you know, I mean, Williamson had gone to become an electrical engineer and worked for like fucking Microsoft or something like yeah. that, Hewlett Packard or something like that, and retired, wow. retired full benefits, everything like that. And then Iggy was like, "Hey, you want to come back and play again with us?" After they had played uh, more shows, because really it kind of started with Mike Watt. Mike Watt really was keeping the Stooges alive. You know, Mike Watt always played with everybody. He's played countless shows with God knows who. You want to fill us in on who Mike Watt is? Mike Watt is the bass player for the Minutemen. Um, Was a big influence on Sonic Youth. Um, A whole bunch of people. I mean, he was a huge, huge dude. Um, Then after um, Boone died, um, uh, he basically kind of just started playing with everybody at that point. And he said he had surgery on his his hand, and he was kind of getting a little... um, I don't know. Uh, Arthritis and you know, really tired. Well, basically, he was kind of forgetting how to play almost. Oh. So he started playing Stooges tunes, and then he got together with uh, Dinosaur Junior guy. Um, what is that guy's name? The the guitar player from them. Well, whoever, and they started playing shows too. At this point too, you know, I was really into the Queens of the Stone Age, so I had gone through my period of the early Queens records, and I had read a lot of articles about them. And he was always talking about, you know, lust for life. And I felt the same way that he did at that time because I think it's like you have these kindred spirits that they talk about it and they're right. like, oh, my God. Like Josh Homme would be a guy to talk about the Stooges with too, you know, because he was heavily influenced by them. When you're jumping ahead a little bit here before yeah. you get to it, should uh, go back to with the uh, what was the final one that they made? That was Raw Power. No, oh, oh ready, ready to, to die. die. Yeah, Ready to Die came out, you know, in, in the uh, – almost the late 2000s, you know? It it should also be said that everyone has passed away. The Ashton brothers have both passed away. Williamson is still alive. But the the uh, Ashton brothers and and Dave... uh, Yeah, so the Stooges are pretty much gone. Because whenever whenever Ron passed away... Yeah, whenever Ron passed away, they had um, uh, Williamson come back. He's like, hey, why don't you do it? And Mike Watt was still playing bass with them. Mike Watt actually took over bass duties, you know, whenever they were still the Stooges. Mm -hmm. So he was really a Stooge, you know. I mean, he was he was another, not necessarily an honorary member, but he was there to record. He's like the Shemp. Correct, correct. You know, he was the Shemp Stooge. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. No. um, And those records are decent. But nothing encapsulates anything that they had done with these first three records. Right, but just to kind of get, get that final picture there. And, and you know, I mean, Iggy's gone on to do, of course, one of his greatest records with, with Hami, which was the um, the post-pop depression record. Oh, it's such a good album. Which was bitching. You know, I've seen Iggy play his, his the old stuff. I saw him play with the the band that he uh, the bass player from Body Count was in his band. Really, that's who I got to see. Right? Okay. The loudest one of the loudest fucking concerts I've ever been to. I like I had to call in sick. No, I overslept the night I had to the the day before I had to go to work. It was like a Memorial Day in Florida, and I woke up at like two o'clock in the afternoon, being punch drunk from basically the sound Dang. because of how loud Iggy was, and well, I got I, to touch him too, which I, I was like, oh it. my god, it's like. <laughs> 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 like I ascended at that point, I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna play music for the rest of my life." And thank you, you know. His sweat hit me, and I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm there." Tastes good. <laughs> and it was such a it was such a huge show, and he played every one of the big Stooges songs, right. and they ripped them up. And at that point too, with that band, he was playing with another brother duo, guitar player, um, drummer duo, and uh, those guys were awesome. They were just he was climbing up on. It was at this place called the um, the the Culture Room, 
Um, they host so many good shows. I mean, it was just so awesome. I was there like two hours early, and I was in my Misfits T-shirt, like, hi. Like, I even walked in, and they all looked at me. Like, the Stooges were, or the, the Iggy wasn't there, but all the other bands, and they were like, who are you? And I was like, oh, I'm here for the show. They were like, yeah, you're not in a band. Hey, I'm Brock. Outside. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. Cool. But seeing Iggy that night, too, kind of really did... That propelled me into, I, I guess, the next period of my life at that point. Sure, you know, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Transformative. I, yeah, it really yeah, was. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it just it, it made me grow into something else to know that that was there. And my and, and nobody I I knew whenever I was a kid listened to the Stooges. Nobody, nobody, everybody knew who Iggy Pop was, but nobody right. listened to the Stooges. First time I ever listened to the Misfits, my my one group of friends were like, "What the fuck is this?" I'm listening to Bob Dylan and shit, and I'm listening to the fucking Misfits. You well, know what I mean? I have a tendency to to kind of like, um, how do I say, go back to the beginning. Like I'll find something, and I'll be like, oh, I like this. Well, or like you know, when I was when I was coming up, I'm a little bit younger than you guys. The Strokes, I really like the Strokes. I remember mm-hmm. when the Strokes were on, and s- that someone had wrote in an, a Rolling Stone article or something akin to that. That they were the new Velvet Underground or something like that was like a was a quote. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I'm like, wait a minute, who's the Velvet Underground? So then you go back and you start looking at the Velvet Underground and like, who were contemporaries of this band at the time? And you see all these bands, but you know, obviously one that stuck out or stood out. Excuse me, <clears throat> easy for me to say, the Stooges. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that when I got that album, I mean, that just totally reminds me of 15 year old me with the poster on the wall. It changes your life. Growing my hair Certain long, things change your life. You know and that, I mean? that, to me, yeah. just like you, was it was a life-changing kind of a moment for and me. That, that's amazing. Like my first sure. Black Sabbath tape, you right. know? Sure. First yeah. Black Sabbath, I was like, oh, my God. Absolutely. Bought it at the flea market, you know? And I was like, this is the shit. This is what I want but it it's, to be. It's cool to talk about it on the 50th anniversary, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's cool to find people that also like it. And I, I guess now, as you get older, you know, you find more people that have more eclectic tastes and stuff like that, of course. And and as time goes by, things like this get more recognition through pop culture and movies and books. And and how many people do you know um, are influenced by these guys? I mean, your friends. I mean, people know the Stooges now. For sure. Before, back in the early part of that time, I didn't know anybody that knew the Stooges. But 20 years before that, everybody was into the Stooges, too. You know, yeah, it's kind of like it depends on they where faded and they came back. And then whenever I would see those articles with Josh Homme and he's like, oh, my God, we wanted to do, you know, an electronic or we wanted to do a rock and roll craft work mixed with the Stooges. Right. And you get Queens of the Stone Age, you know, like, holy crap. That's so cool. That he wow, that's re- a great way to describe that. I've yeah, and it's like that. he really he really wanted to create something with that intensity, but also with the weirdness of. Craft work, we you know? are craft work. <laughs> <laughs> we are computer people. <laughs> Trends, Europe, Express, craft work. <laughs> no, I mean, they're just the influence is still there. I mean, in anything that I do in music too, I always look at the Stooges in that way. I remember when we were writing songs, it's like I let's per- do yeah. 25, 25 words or less. Let's use what we've learned from these guys, you know. And uh, most of the bands that that I and, have played ooh. with are new. Everybody knew the Stooges tunes, yeah, you know. Yeah. But by no means am I trying to compare myself in any no, way or any no. hold a candle to anything like that. I just what I mean by what I think Brock and I mean by this is, um, I was listening to the Stooges a lot and kind of trying to take that vermilla suit or whatever. Um, what am I trying to say? That word, just trying to make it, um, you know. I don't know. Capture some something. If you could have one piece of what they had. And create something yeah. with it. It's just something that you you look back and you're like, that was inspired by that. You can see right. those things, and you right. and if you you consciously look at that, and you're like, oh my god, that's 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 my you know Stooges riff. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's uh, that's my ACDC riff. You know, <laughs> right. but you know, uh, with the Stooges, uh. yeah, with the Stooges, <laughs> their career was so awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Their their uh, career. The word I'm looking for is versimilitude. Versim. God damn, you just spit six dollars right there. <laughs> I didn't spit. That was a six dollar word. Versimilitude is what I was looking for because I'm I'm listening to this as we were being as we were trying to be creative, and it just to me that's what, like I was saying I was trying to rip off. So I'm 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 just thinking in my head I'm playing this because I'm listening to this. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make yeah. it real, trying to make it true. Yeah. Like you're saying, taking what we, they've done and being like, well, fuck it, I don't really care. 
I'm just going to kind of do this because uh, it feels right. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, it's that lightning in a bottle kind of thing. Yeah, and of course, collaborating with people, you have to, you know, it's yeah. just, you know. You got to have some, a lot of like. It has to click, you know. Yeah, yeah you got to have a sure. lot of like things. And I mean, and whenever you, you, because of course, nobody can compare to the Stooges um, at all in anything, I don't think. Uh, but the the influence is there. Right. That's how you can compare them to anybody else is that you can compare their influences on them. I mean, it goes you on. Know? The list goes on and on. Yeah, and the on. Ramones. Come, come on. I mean, I so love many the people. Ramones. Yeah. The Cramps. Oh, man. The, the Dead cramps. Boys. The White Stripes. Yeah. yeah. The just, Strokes. Yeah. I mean, anybody that was. I mean, shit. What, did, what was the last song that um, uh, the Sex Pistols played live? There you go. No, no fun. fun. They played no fun okay. to a group Sex of people, pistols, you know. The Clash Sonic played the, their songs. I mean, uh, come yeah. on, who who wasn't there to influence, be influenced by that? So, and even they though created that, well, even if they didn't directly influence them, they influenced somebody that influenced another slew it, of yes. somebody's. Yes, and you know, it, it and always and trickles on. back like the yeah. rings of in a tree or whatever. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, you go back to that center point, and again, just like uh, Jello Biafra was saying, is people found those other people that liked it right. and created these things, like the dead fucking Kennedys. Come there on, you go. Yeah. I and mean, for such a small body of work, I mean, yes, and and it's I know there's a lot of B sides and other songs recorded, nah. but again, sticking with like the original 23 songs there that are on the albums and stuff i mean i guess you could look at whatever else they've recorded around that time that was played live and, and stuff like that i'm sure yeah. they did some covers and yeah there's some really some cool, cool improv deep stuff. tracks weird stuff like that yeah but nothing compares to any of this right here because most of it was tape recorded you know for a small body of work it's a it's a pretty big fucking you know and, and influence and is, is the career you know large. I, they didn't have a career they had a career for that short amount of time but their influence was so big to be able to be a part of something like that had to have felt like, oh, my God. Right. You know, whenever they – because they didn't realize it at the time. Nobody said well, anything to them. They thought that they were going down yeah, the, the, time, the, the tubes whenever their records came out and nobody bought them. But people are like – like us are sitting there in their their basement just like, oh, my God. Right. This is well, you can't see the forest everything. from the trees, right? Am I right, boys? <laughs> <laughs> hi <Hi-oh. laughs> <laughs> Get out. There's just there's just so many good things about the Stooges, great things. Go listen to them now. You got to listen to the Stooges, and if you listen to them all in a row, I used to do that, too. And, like, I had all the Iggy's records, um, and whenever I was working in printing, and I, I had this little um, CD um, player slash tape player. So I would have all my CDs up there when I'd have to pull 24-hour shifts or something like that. So I put in the first one, listen to the first record. Immediately open it up, put in the second record. Immediately open up, put in the third record. Immediately open it up, put in Kill City. And then I would immediately open it up, and then I would go through every one of his records. I would get through like 23 of them, you know, in a in a full shift. And I'm like, good Lord, I want to just listen to Raw Power again. <laughs> you know, I would want to go your back favorite? to it. Is that your favorite one? Can you pick a favorite one? <sighs> Not right now. I think they shift. you pick a favorite shift. song, like some, some of your favorite songs? What about you, Dan? Anything like that? Um, well, I just... Like having said, having you know. raw power around when I was younger, uh, again I'm completely on the songs. I couldn't tell you the name of any of the songs, and it's not because I didn't enjoy it. I All obviously right. bought Stooges albums later or an A Stooges album later, but um, yeah, man, um, I, I think that it was. Re- I'll be honest, this podcast has been really cool because I've learned a lot, and I knew when it started. I did research. I knew a lot of the facts. But I wasn't going to add anything to the conversation (laughs) because, honestly, what comes through is, I mean, you guys are huge fans. And it's cool because you guys are in a band together, so you have that synergy of, you know, some basis. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's that's awesome. Um, And because I I think of this, I'll probably listen to some more Stooges. Yes. Cool. You got, I mean, really, I think at this point you should probably put in raw power. Yeah, and I think, just really I jam the, the first whole fucking one. thing just to get that feeling back again, yeah. and then start start it over again. Yeah, that's just fair. to hit your original point that you heard the first time, and then go through it. I think the first you know? one, dude, the first, first one, one is. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, I love Funhouse a lot, and like yes. I said, that influenced me a lot. And Raw Power is Raw Power. Well, but my favorite, I think, I have to pick just the first whole first album as a whole. I, I think just. 
because of attrition. I'll start with the second one. No, oh, oh. nice, nice. Well, you know, one of my favorite songs I think would be "Not Right." Of course, like I said, yeah. Um, I want to be your dog. That's one of those warm up riffs that I got. You know, the, if I'm ever playing, I'll I'll play "I Want to Be Your Dog" because I just love the way that once you get it down, it's so simple. You know, you're like, yes, that sounds really.